In this video, I'll share the initial set of tests I did on the newly released Apple Watch Series 8. Specifically, I'll show you how the heart rate tracking of the Apple Watch 8 performed during cycling, spinning, walking and weightlifting. And we'll take a look at the oxygen saturation measurements, step counting performance and also briefly discuss the potential of the new skin temperature sensor. Finally, we'll compare the heart rate accuracy of the Apple Watch 8 to 63 other watches I tested over the last years. Hello everyone, for those of you that are new to the channel, my name is Rob and I'm a postdoctoral scientist specializing in biological data analysis. Now today I spent a whole day testing different aspects of the new Apple Watch Series 8 and I want to share those results with you in this video. I'll mostly focus on the heart rate performance, but I'll also take a look at the SpO2 measurements and step counting. Now, over the next two days, I'll do even more detailed testing, also looking into the sleep tracking performance and looking at how the Apple Watch Series 8 compares to the new Apple Watch SE. And those videos should be out on Sunday or maybe Monday. There are already plenty of videos out there discussing the specs of this new Apple Watch. So let's not rehash that in this video, since you can also check that for instance on Apple's website. Let's therefore immediately dive into the first results of the heart rate testing. To test that, I'll compare the heart rate measurements of the Apple Watch Series 8 against the Polar H10 ECG chest strap, which can generally record my heart rate very accurately, as I showed you in a recent video. And we'll start by looking at one of the easiest types of exercises for a watch to track, cycling indoors. Now this involves very little movement or tension on my arms and will therefore produce less noise in the signal. And here we can see an overview of the accuracy for the whole ride. Each dot here is a single heart rate measurement, with along the horizontal axis the value according to the Polar H10 ECG chest strap, and on the vertical axis the value according to the watch 8. The closer the points are to this blue line, the better the agreement between the ECG chest strap and the watch 8. And the darker black the color, the more dots there are. As you can see, there's a really good agreement between the watch 8 and the ECG chest strap, as almost all points are along the blue line. The correlation, this R value up here, is almost perfect, and allowing for two decimal points, it rounds to 1. Now this correlation value cannot be higher than 1, so a rounded value of 1 is almost perfect. And we can see why that is if we actually look at the individual training session. Along the horizontal axis here we have the time, and my heart rate is along the vertical axis. In blue I plotted my heart rate according to the Polar H10 ECG chest strap, and in red is my heart rate according to the Apple Watch Series 8. As you can see the two lines overlap almost perfectly, to the point where you can basically not see the red line at all. So this means that the agreement is really good. However, let's put this into perspective by comparing it to many of the other watches I've tested over the last two years. Now I should mention these are preliminary results, since I'm just looking at one exercise with the Apple Watch, whereas I generally have many more for the other watches. That overview is displayed here. The correlation value I was talking about before is the metric I will use for this, which is displayed along the horizontal axis right here. We want that value to be as close to 1 as possible. On the vertical axis, I ordered the watches from worst to best. So the further to the right and the higher a device is, the better is its correlation with the reference device. Now here I marked the Apple Watch Series 8 in red. And as you can see, the Watch 8 is actually amongst the best watches I tested over last year. It is in fact the best performing watch by this metric. If we now zoom in and keep only the best performing watches, we can see that even more clearly. The Watch 8 is doing really well and is really close to a correlation of 1. However, all the other Apple watches are also very close. So I suspect that as I collect more data, the Series 8 will perform about as well as the Series 7 for instance. Still, it is clear that Apple watches are by far some of the best heart rate trackers. So this is looking quite good, though these are still initial tests and I will try to release a more complete test in a few days. Next, let's briefly take a look at another easy type of exercise for a watch to track, walking outside. A graph of those results is displayed right here. Again in red is my heart rate according to the Apple Watch and in blue according to the Polar H10 ECG chest strap. 
As you can see, the patterns of the two match quite well and the Apple Watch follows along nicely with the chest strap, though there are a few more small deviations compared to what we saw for spinning. However, overall, this is still looking really good. Next, let's take a look at a much more challenging type of exercise, cycling outside. While cycling outdoors, watches tend to shift a lot more on the wrist, making accurate heart rate readings much more difficult. Let's see if this influenced the heart rate accuracy of the Apple Watch Series 8. Here we see a similar overview plot to before, but now for biking outside. As you can see, there's still a pretty good agreement between the Watch 8 and the ECG chest strap, though there are a few more points away from the blue line now, though there are just a few. The correlation is also a bit lower compared to what we saw for cycling indoors, with the correlation now being 0.97. However, this is still really good. We can see that in more detail if we look at the bike rides themselves. The red line representing the Watch 8 mostly follows along very nicely with the Polar H10 ECG chest strap in blue. However, for this bike ride right here, we do see that there are some missing data right here and also right here. This means that in these moments, the Apple Watch Series 8 was not able to get a clean heart rate signal. However, if we look at this second bike ride, we actually see that the Apple Watch 8 was almost perfect. Here, the red line is almost not visible at all, indicating that the heart rate detected by the Apple Watch was almost identical to the ECG chest strap. We can again put this into perspective by looking at many of the other watches I've tested over the last years. Similar to before, we will use the correlation with an ECG chest strap as the value on the horizontal axis. And the better the agreement, the more to the top right the device is. And as you can see, the Watch 8, which is again marked in red, is amongst the better watches when it comes to heart rate tracking. It seems to be about as good as some other Apple watches and also some Huawei watches. However, so far, these exercises represent easy and medium heart exercises for a watch to track for heart rate. So let's now move on to one of the more difficult exercises for a watch to track, weightlifting. This is much more difficult because of the increased tension on my wrist and arm, making it much harder for the watch to get a clean heart rate signal. However, first a quick side note. If you're interested in the latest updates on the wearables I'm testing, I'm planning to start back up with my newsletter and posting more off the cuff things on my Instagram and my YouTube Shorts channel. So if you're interested in any of those, those are linked below. Of course, you would also make me really happy and it would help my efforts if you subscribe to this YouTube channel. But of course, this is totally up to you. Now enough self-promotion, let's take a look at the performance during weightlifting. Here we can see an overview of that accuracy, similar to how we were looking at it before. However, now the performance of the Watch 8 seems to be a bit worse compared to before, showing a correlation of 0.95. However, overall, this is still very good. Almost no other watch has this good a performance during weightlifting. We can see why that is based on the individual training session. Again, in blue-green, we see the results of the ECG chest strap and in red the results of the Apple Watch Series 8. Each time I do a set of exercises, my heart rate increases, as you can see according to the reference device in blue. The Apple Watch Series 8 is mostly able to detect the peaks in my heart rate as well, which is really good. Almost no other watch is able to do this. We can show this by comparing it to many of the other watches I've tested in the past, and we can see those results in this overview right here. Again, the more to the top right, the better is its consistency with the ECG chest strap. And as you can see, relative to other watches, the Watch 8, which is marked in red, is really amongst the best watches when it comes to heart rate tracking while weightlifting. And we can see that even more clearly if we zoom into the part of the graph with the best watches. Again, the Apple Watch Series 8 is about as good as the previous generation of Apple Watches and some Huawei watches. Now, out of all of the watches I've tested over the last years, I would only really recommend Apple Watches and a select number of Huawei watches for heart rate tracking during weightlifting. Otherwise, the better and cheaper option is to just buy an ECG chest strap. So, based on my initial testing, I would conclude that the Watch 8 is about as good a heart rate tracker as the Watch 7 and the Watch 6, which makes sense as most of the sensor design has stayed the same over the last two years. However, I'll do more extensive testing of both the Apple Watch Series 8, but also the new Apple Watch SE, and I'll report back to you on Sunday with those results. 
So the optical heart rate sensor of the Apple Watch is pretty good at heart rate tracking. However, how does it perform at measuring something different, namely your oxygen saturation, or in other words, SpO2? Now where heart rate is usually recorded using green light, red and infrared light are generally used to track oxygen saturation. To test the oxygen saturation measurements, I wanted to see if the watch 8 ever detects a low oxygen saturation when it's not supposed to. And I did this by taking measurements with the watch when I knew that my SpO2 level was at normal levels. To test that, I took 40 SpO2 measurements with the watch 8. And in between, I reattached the watch to my wrist several times and also switched the watch between arms. At the same time, I also recorded my oxygen saturation with a dedicated finger pulse oximeter. Now at ground level, my oxygen saturation should be in my normal range, which is generally between 97 and 100% and should not fall below roughly 95%. However, when the effective oxygen concentration is much lower, as it is for instance in a low air pressure environment, my oxygen saturation can drop below 90%. And this can also happen if you have for instance a respiratory infection. So let's see how it performed. Here you can see those measurements I took at ground level. On the left are 40 measurements taken with the Apple Watch 8, so each dot here is a single measurement. And on the right are matching measurements taken with the finger pulse oximeter. On the vertical axis are the SpO2 values, and as you can see, the Apple Watch 8 generally recorded a much wider range and also lower SpO2 values than the dedicated finger pulse oximeter. I actually found that most of the time, the Apple Watch 8 would record SpO2 values of 96% or lower, which is pretty low. We can see that even more clearly if we display these results as a histogram. In this case, the SpO2 values are along the horizontal axis, and the larger the bar, the more often that value was recorded. As you can see, the Apple Watch, which is displayed in red, mostly recorded lower SpO2 values than the finger pulse oximeter, which is displayed in blue. A few times, the Apple Watch even recorded a value of 94% or lower. So this is not looking that great, but it's difficult still to make any final judgments about the SpO2 accuracy of the Apple Watch 8. All we can say is that it does seem to record relatively low SpO2 values sometimes, which are probably recording a lower value than I had in reality. Now the next thing I tested the Apple Watch Series 8 for is the step counting accuracy. To test the step counting accuracy, I went out and took exactly 4000 steps with the Watch 8. Now I do not like counting 4,000 steps in my head, which is why I counted each step manually using this tally counter. Let's take a look at those results. I actually counted my steps in four segments of 1,000 steps, switching the tally counter between my right and left hand, which is what the right and left labels refer to here. And I wore the Apple Watch 8 on my right arm. Now these numbers right here are the steps counted for each of the four segments by the Watch 8. As you can see, it was okay at counting my steps. It was mostly relatively close to the 1000 steps I took, but in this last segment, it was quite a bit more off, counting 57 steps too many. To put that into perspective, here are the steps counted by the new Apple Watch SE I wore at the same time. As you can see, the step counting of the Watch SE was a bit worse than what we saw for the Watch 8, since the SE shows quite a bit more variation. For this first segment, it counted 108 steps too many, though this might have been due to the watch being slow at displaying the final number of steps it counted. I've noticed that it sometimes takes the Apple Watch a while to update the number of steps on the display, so it might not have been fully updated when I started testing the watch. So, though this test is definitely limited, the new Watch 8 does appear to do slightly better than the new Apple Watch SE, though more testing is definitely needed. Now one other major addition to the Apple Watch Series 8 is the temperature sensor, and I'll discuss this in more detail on Sunday. However, I did want to briefly address the potential use of this sensor for temperature tracking throughout the night, since this is something many people commented about in my last video. Now the most obvious way to use this is not to track the temperature over just a single night, but to track patterns over many days, or searching for nights where there's a big deviation. If there is a big increase in your temperature, for instance, this means you might have a fever. And women could also potentially track their cycle and fertility via the skin temperature sensor. However, where I'm still a bit skeptical is the use of tracking temperature changes throughout the night. 
Now let me show you why that is by comparing the skin temperature measurements taken with the Whoopstrap 4.0 during the night to my core body temperature. I will use the Whoop 4.0 measurements as an example to make a point, but I will of course look at the Apple data in the future. For tracking my core body temperature throughout the night, I use the MyTemp sensor from Purple Axis, which takes the form of an easy to swallow capsule that measures my core body temperature. The sensor is normally used by athletes to continuously monitor their temperature. That data can for instance be used for monitoring the safety and performance of the athlete. However, I use it to track my core body temperature during my sleep. Here you can see a graph of my core body temperature throughout one night plotted in green and my skin temperature according to the whoop strap in black. With degrees Fahrenheit on the right for my American friends and degrees Celsius for most of the rest of the world on the left. As you can see during this night my core body temperature dropped during the first part of the night after which it slowly rose again as I got closer to the point of waking up. Interestingly, my skin temperature, at least as measured by the whoop strap, does not follow the same pattern. It actually rose as I got under the covers and kept slowly rising throughout the night with some peaks and some valleys. And this is more or less the general pattern I observed for all of the nights, where the graph of my core body temperature shows more or less a hammock shape, whereas my skin temperature according to the whoop strap shows a slow increase with some dips and some peaks. Now this doesn't necessarily mean that the whoop strap does not measure the correct temperature. It just shows you that core body temperature and skin temperature are potentially very different things. The good thing is that the Apple Watch tries to actively correct for temperature fluctuations of the environment and might therefore be able to get a more accurate reading of skin temperature that correlates better with core body temperature, but we still have to see if this works. I also have to mention some of the limitations of the tests I showed you in this video. Now there are multiple, but the most important is that this is just an initial test with a very limited amount of data. Second, I have to mention that this is how the watch performed on my physiology and it might vary depending on for instance your skin tone, gender or body mass. Still, overall, based on these tests, I'm quite happy with my new Apple Watch Series 8. However, I was also happy with my Series 7 and my Series 6. Overall, the improvements from the Series 6 to Series 8 seem relatively minor to me from a health and sports tracking perspective. However, we still have to see what Apple is able to do with the temperature measurements and potentially also with future firmware updates. I showed you a few weeks ago, for instance, how Apple brought amazing sleep tracking to the Apple Watch with a firmware update that was part of watchOS 9. I tested that for 18 nights against an EEG device that actually measures my brain waves and you can find that video right here. Now if you want a cheaper watch, Fitbits are a more budget friendly alternative to sleep tracking. Now I hope this video provided you with some value. Thank you so much for watching and catch you in the next video.